Well, welcome everyone to our Sunday Zoom meeting and um, as you all know we've been working on the song of prayer and we have finished the prayer section and today we're going to finish the forgiveness section so we should get that finished today. Um, we talked last week about how forgiveness is the Holy Spirit's job and that it's not what we do, that we give it over to the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk more about that this week. Um, but first of all, I think we'll we'll begin again uh, where we set off last time. Uh, if anyone is following us, we're in um, the Song of Prayer, uh, the second section on um, forgiveness. And we're in section three, line five. So... Um, <clears throat> It starts with, what should I do for him, your holy son, your holy son? Um, okay, so let's back up slightly. Okay, so this is um, how we, we do forgiveness. This is what Jesus is talking about. And he's saying, what should I do for him, your holy son, should be the only thing you ever ask when help is needed and forgiveness sought. Now, we've been reading the Song of Prayer, and um, and so you'll be familiar with me saying at this stage that Jesus writes the Course on multiple levels. Um, he writes it on a mythological level, where you know God sees the separation and He is crying for his children and he misses them and he's incomplete without them and he creates the holy spirit as an answer to the separation um and and that's a mythology um and 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 there's nothing wrong with setting out and understanding the course that way in the beginning which is why jesus wrote it it's a very non-threatening um and comforting way uh, to view things from within the dream. Uh, but as we read the course, as we practice the course, as we go up the ladder, uh, we, we come to the point where we realize, well, you know, Jesus himself tells us God doesn't take steps and he does nothing about the separation because it never happened. And God doesn't know about us because there is no us. He has one son who's having a schizophrenic experience God doesn't know about. So Jesus writes the course on the level of, of, of myth. And he does that because it's helpful. Um, it's, it's, it's a non-scary, you know, gentle way to ease us into the metaphysics of the course. Um, and then he he writes on the other levels as he goes forward. So, you know, Ken always said you have to um, see the course like a great epic poem. And that you can't pick any one thing and um, take it out of context of the greater metaphysics of the course. Um, and you have to understand Jesus's use of symbols and mythology, because what he's done is he has taken the truth and he has um, explained it using the existing mythological symbols of Christianity. So he's completely reinterpreted those existing symbols uh, to suit his own purposes in trying to teach truth to us. So... <laughs> regularly we're going to encounter something like this in the course where Jesus says what should I do for him your holy son now when we read the prayer section Jesus says when you ask something like that what you're actually doing is you're reinforcing that there's something wrong so you're sitting in the darkness asking for the light being Jesus of the Holy Spirit to come in and fix the illusions for us um and so really what, what we've, we've got to do is we've, we've got to, like <laughs> throughout the entire course, Jesus says to us, ask the Holy Spirit for help, ask him for specifics. Um, you know, he even says, ask God for help, which is blasphemous because he doesn't even know we're here and he doesn't understand prayers as Jesus tells us elsewhere in the course. Um, and and then in other parts of the course, Jesus says, you know, all asking within the world is a form of propaganda for itself. We shouldn't be asking. You know, ultimately, the only prayer we should ever have is that we know there's nothing to pray for. 
Because if we're sitting in the darkness making illusions real, and then we want the Holy Spirit to come in and make them real for him, like we have, and be as insane as we are, and then try and fix them for us, that's not really the point. So you've always got to understand what Jesus is saying in the greater context of the metaphysics of the Course. So I, I think, um, let's have a little quote of what Jesus said to Helen. And the context of this is that Helen was working with one of our psychotherapy um, clients. And she wasn't quite sure what to say. And so she says to Jesus, what should I say for this brother? And Jesus said, uh, you cannot ask, what shall I say to him and hear God's answer? Rather, ask instead, help me to see this brother through the eyes of truth and not of judgment, and the help of God and all his angels will respond. So this is exactly the same sentiment that we have in the Song of Prayer, where Helen herself had been confused about what it meant to ask for help. Um, and, and you know, Ken had pointed out, like, you know, the, the inconsistencies in terms of how Helen asked for help. And, and the Song of Prayer came as an answer to that. And, and it has exactly the same sentiment of what I've just read there in terms of Jesus' answer to Helen. So on the one hand, I could stay in a situation and I could depend on my previous learning and my judgments and my biases and my need to be helpful so that I can, you know, not look at my guilt and feel like I'm worthy despite my guilt by being a help to someone. So that's 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 option number one. Option number two, I can acknowledge that I don't know anything and I don't know what anything's for. And I can say to the Holy Spirit, so I have the right teacher, what should I do for him, your Holy Son? And that's definitely an improvement. That has me on the right ladder with the right teacher. But again, the entire thrust of the um, song of prayer and also what Jesus said to Helen when she said what should I say to this brother is that you don't stay in the darkness believing there's problems you go above the battlefield with Jesus where there's no problems and then you'll just know what to do so I want to just point that out in terms of this section because it's it's a glaring inconsistency and the entire course is full of them um, and that's why you don't take anything in isolation and point to it and go that's what it means you, you've got to consider everything that's said in the course in terms of the greatest greater metaphysics i hope that makes sense okay the form the seeking takes you need not judge well this is the whole point we don't judge that's what jesus said to um helen Ask me to see this brother through the eyes of truth um, instead of true judgment. And you see, the eyes of truth says, my brother doesn't have a problem. My brother is Christ, who thinks he's a person with problems. So the eyes of truth is that he doesn't have problems because he's not a body. As Jesus tells us in the course, if you know you have Christ in you, then you see Christ everywhere except in bodies. Christ's never come into a body. Now, we talk about Christ. Christ is in heaven. Christ is one with God for eternity and completely unaware of the tiny mal idea. But the Holy Spirit is our memory of our identity as Christ, one with God for eternity. Um, and so really, um, that would be the eyes of truth for a brother, that we would understand that, he, that there isn't a problem. His only problem is that he thinks there's a problem. And if I think there's a problem, I'm just as insane. So our only prayer is ever to know that there's, there's no problem. If there's a problem, I'm in my wrong mind. I think Christ is body. I think there's a world. I think Christ could be crucified. And he can't. Okay, let it not be you who sets the form in which forgiveness comes to save God's son. So we're asking for help with forgiveness. And Jesus is saying, look, it's none of your business. Don't decide how you do that. Um, you, you, you hand that over to the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important. The light of Christ in him is his release. So when a brother is acting insanely, it is a call for love. 
It is a call for the light he doesn't know he is. It is a call by him for the Holy Spirit, which is in him. So we only ever have, um, you know, the vast majority of people on the planet are calling out for the love they don't know they are. The love that terrifies them, the love they don't feel deserving of. So the light of Christ in him that he doesn't know about, he can't connect with right now, um, is his release. And it is this that answers to his call, because the light in him that he's seeking is the same light that's in me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the memory of our identity in Christ. Um, Ken said once that um, you don't forgive a brother. There's no brothers. <laughs> you forgive the mind that thinks it's your brother. And that's the same mind that thinks it's you. So we're not forgiving bodies. We're not forgiving what's not actually happening. We're forgiving the mind that thinks it's our brother. And it's the same mind that thinks it's us. Because there's only one mind dreaming it's everyone. And so I choose to join with the Holy Spirit that light and then that light answers the call for the same light in my brother and if i um choose against my insane voice talking to itself and all my past learnings and my opinions and everything else and i let my mind go clear i just shut the hell up in my head then there's a stillness in my mind which is the holy spirit um and i and i identify with that place of stillness and love where nothing's wrong <laughs> where all is well, this place of being above the battleground uh, with Jesus or the Holy Spirit, or in the cinema with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And, and, and if I can get rid of all my irritation and my stress and my worry and my judgment, if I can let all that go, or if I can even just want it to be gone, I don't have to have succeeded in let, letting go of it completely. I just have to have, as Jesus says, you, you don't have to have no thoughts that are not pure. You just have to have none you would keep. So if I'm willing to forgo all the crazy in my head, then that's enough to have the holy instant where I connect with that space in my mind where all is well. And from that space of all is well, that peace, that love, that will just echo through my words and my actions. They will become infused with love. I'll just know the most effective thing to do in the situation. But my job is to get all the other crap out of the way first. <laughs> That's why we don't seek for that love. You know, we, we we go to that love and we look at all the crap that's going on in our head um, and we choose the love instead of the crap. And then we, and then from that place that knows there's no problems, um, we then act within the dream in a way that's part of the solution. I hope that makes sense. Forgive him. As the Christ decides you should. Now, again, Jesus is saying Christ. And again, this is the Holy Spirit, which is our identity as Christ, our memory of being Christ. And be his eyes, capital H, the Holy Spirit's, uh, through which you look on him, your brother. And speak for him, capital H, Holy Spirit, uh, as well. So again, if I can just identify with that thought of perfect love in my mind, um, then that will just filter through my mind, my experiences, um, and it will just express itself through me. So rather than me searching my memory banks and going, what worked in the past and what worked in the, you know, what might work in this future? And maybe I should say this and maybe I should say that. I, I become peaceful and, and maybe words will just formulate in my mind or maybe an idea will present itself or maybe an idea from the past will come up that I might not have thought of otherwise. So if I just, if I become peaceful, if I become still, 
or at least if I, I, I choose to identify with the peacefulness, the stillness and the love, despite anything else that's going on in my head. Again, I don't have to have no thoughts that are not pure. I just have none that I would invest in or want to keep. Um, then suddenly all that intuitive um, um, knowledge is there for me. I'll, I'll just have a sense of knowing what's to do um, that's most helpful to everyone in the situation equally. He knows the need. That's the Holy Spirit. The question and the answer. He will say exactly what to do in words that you can understand and you can also use. Do not confuse his function with your own. He is the answer. You, the one who hears. Now, again, we're just identifying uh, with that thought of perfect love in our mind. You know, we're, we're withdrawing our allegiance to the crazy in the head, to the to the the personal self, to the insane voice talking to itself, and we're just connecting with that place of stillness in our mind. And then there's just there's just going to be acting from a place of knowingness with actions that are infused with love. And what is it he speaks to you about? About salvation and the gift of peace about the end of sin and guilt and death, about the role forgiveness has in him. Do you but listen? Now, again, the Holy Spirit doesn't say anything. The Holy Spirit is a lighthouse in your mind. It is your memory of um, the love and the truth of our identity in God, just this oneness, this perfect love. And it, it's it's the one thing we, 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 we couldn't wipe out of our minds, <laughs> you know. We kept descending the ladder and forgetting more as we went and dissociating off and splitting off things we didn't want to look at and forgetting about our true nature more and more deeply each time. But we couldn't get rid of that memory of God in our mind, the Holy Spirit. The memory of the love that extended itself as the love we are, and it's just love. So that memory of love is inside everyone's mind. We don't have to put it there or strive to put it there. We just got to get the garbage out of the way. The interference to the awareness of love's presence in our mind. And again, when we say the awareness of love's presence in our mind, we mean the awareness of the, the memory of love in our mind. Because there's no love in the dream. Love is in heaven. But the Holy Spirit is our memory of love. The love that created us and the love that we are. For he will be heard by anyone who calls upon his name and places his forgiveness in his, capital H, hands for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and again, so we, we, we pass the idea of forgiveness over to the Holy Spirit. We don't try and do it as an ego. We don't try and do it as a little separated self because there is no separated self. I might believe I'm Keith, but Keith has no existence whatsoever. It's a movie character. Um, what I think I am is was over long ago and in truth never happened at all. So, you know, we don't want the ego hijacking the forgiveness process, going, I, the holy ego, I'm forgiving you. That's, that, that's, you know, that's what we've got to avoid. So instead, what we do is we fall still and connect with that thought of perfect stillness and love in our mind and let it do the work. That's why the third step of the forgiveness pro process, you know, the removal of guilt, that's the Holy Spirit's job. We don't try and do that as an ego. Forgiveness has been given him to teach, to save it from destruction. And to make the means for separation, sin and death become again the holy gift of God. So Jesus is talking about forgiveness to destroy what we've always thought forgiveness was, which is, OK, what you did was dreadful and you hurt me. Um, and I'm going to try and forget about that. And I'm going to try and forgive you. Um, and it's nonsense. It's not forgiveness at all. It's making the error real, it's saying the sin happened. My hurt happened. I was affected by this. Uh, none of which is true. 
um, one imaginary character did something to another imaginary character, but imaginary characters aren't real. Unless I want to be the body, unless I want to be the insane voice talking to itself. And then, of course, I can go, you did this to me. I'm not unhappy because I've thrown the Holy Spirit out of my mind uh, to be an ego. I'm unhappy because you did that. You bumped into me. Prayer is his own right hand. Made free to save as true forgiveness is allowed to come from his eternal vigilance and love. So again, the idea that forgiveness is the Holy Spirit's job. Listen and learn. In other words, quieten the insane voice in your head. Quieten those mad thoughts that are not your real thoughts. Um, connect with the stillness and the love in your mind. So listen and learn. Do not judge. This is the whole point. You know, if, if, if I'm judging, if I have an opinion on something, if I've evaluated something, I'm in my wrong mind because that's what the wrong mind does. Um, and the minute I step out of judgment, um, I take the Holy Spirit or Jesus' hand in the holy instant. Once I go, I don't know what anything's for. Who am I to judge? Nothing is right or wrong. Um, what is, there is just what is. And once we do that, and we connect with the stillness in our minds, even if there's madness as well in our minds, we connect with the stillness and we, we plant our flag there. We nail our colors to the mass there. That's the holy instant. It is to God you turn to hear what you should do. Now, again, we don't turn to God. God doesn't know about us. Okay. God only knows about Christ, who is one with him, inseparable from him, um, indistinguishable from him in heaven, outside the dream of consciousness completely. Um, so again, Jesus is speaking mythically here. And I mean, when he uses God, he really means the Holy Spirit, which is the memory of God that we've brought into the dream of consciousness. His answer will be clear as morning nor is his forgiveness what you think it is. In other words, it's not forgiveness to destroy. This person has damaged you. This person has hurt you. This person, no, they haven't, because I'm not the body. <laughs> I might think I am, but what I am, represented by being above the battleground with Jesus or in the cinema with Jesus, that me is completely unaffected by the, the world's dreams. Um. So, nor is his forgiveness what you think it is. It doesn't make the error real. It's not you healing from what your brother did to you. It's you understanding that your brother didn't do anything to you. That was a movie. Um, okay. That, that, that was a body situation. That was a physical situation. That had nothing to do with you as a mind. Still does he know and that should be enough. Forgiveness has a teacher who will fail in nothing. So this is the Holy Spirit when we hand it over to him. Rest a while in this. Now again, rest a while in this. Just quieten your mind. Stop thinking you know anything. I don't know what anything is for. Is like the cancel, cancel button on our brain where our mind grows still. And that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Do not attempt to judge forgiveness nor to set it in an earthly frame. Now, um, David posted in the group during the week about the two picture frames. Um, and this was in uh, like the special relationship section in the course. And this is where Jesus says that the ego gives us a gift of death. So it's an entire thought system based on the death of God and um, being separate from God and the world. And um and, and, and that will culminate in our own death. And the ego gives us this gift and it puts us in this lovely, ornate, fancy picture frame, uh, which is the special relationship, you know, the special love relationship. Uh, so it's a gift of death, but it's in this lovely frame, which entices us in uh, to death. 
thought system of death and the experience of our death, uh, thinking with the body. And then there is the Holy Spirit's gift. And, um, and this is really light frame. And within that frame is the holy instant or Christ or God. Um, and, and, and when we take that gift, we just put all our attention on the picture and the frame disappears because um, our attention is solely in the holy instant. Anyway, that's what Jesus is referencing here. So do not attempt to judge forgiveness, nor to set it in an earthly frame. Because again, forgiveness isn't really happening between bodies. There's no bodies, okay? Um, there's just guilt in your mind getting projected onto a movie. So you're not forgiving a brother. Um, now I'm not saying we deny we have brothers. We don't do that. That's an unworthy form of denial. We walk home with our brothers. But it's important to keep the metaphysics in mind, which is that there's only one mind dreaming itself to be everyone. So again, it's like Ken said, we, we don't forgive a brother. We forgive the mind that thinks it's that brother, uh, which is the same mind that thinks it's me. Let it arise to Christ, who welcomes it as gift to him. He will not leave you comfortless, nor fail to send his angels down to answer you in his own name. Now, again, Jesus is speaking mythically with angels. He's just talking about the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He stands beside the door to which forgiveness is the only key. Just referring back to Jesus talking about the, the door we lost the key to earlier on, which was... Um, true forgiveness as opposed to forgiveness to destroy. Give it to him to use instead of you, forgiveness that is, and you will see the door swing silently open upon the shining face of Christ. Behold your brother there behind the door, the son of God, as he created him. So that's the end of our section on forgiveness. Um, and we have a little bit of time, so I want to try and just bring this together in terms of forgiveness. Um, and I'm going to, we're going to refer to your Uncle Ken a little bit here. I've posted some of these in the group during the week, and I just want to return to them. So the first Kenneth Wapnick quote is, as the lessons say again and again, asking the help of Jesus or the Holy Spirit in the continual monitoring of your mind and observing not changing your ego thoughts in action is your only responsibility. What you are will tell you of itself. So again, we're back to this idea that forgiveness is the Holy Spirit's job. Our job is to um, allow Jesus or the Holy Spirit to look at our ego with us. That's our job. Our job is to bring the darkness to the light. So we join with the light and we look on the darkness without judging it or attacking ourselves for it. And as long as we do that, we've joined our perception to Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And then it, it'll be their job. So we pass it over to them. Okay. So again, just to, to build on that, here's Ken when he was asked by his student, could you say something about what it would mean to be kind to ourselves? And Ken said, in the context of A Course in Miracles, the way that we are kind to ourselves is to forgive ourselves for being so unkind. In other words, you want to get in touch with how unkind you are, how much you hate yourself. And you want to look at that without feeling guilty about it or feeling that you're doing something terrible. This is the non-judgmental looking again. In other words, basically, that's how you are kind. The way you are kind is to look at all the unkindness in yourself, but not attack yourself for it. So again, our job is to allow Jesus or the Holy Spirit to look at our ego with us. So just one more for now. Uh, this is your Uncle Ken again. And I'm pretty sure this is from Rules for Decision Workshop. The function of the miracle is not to have us stop choosing our egos. It is to have us be aware that we are choosing the ego. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. This is what gets almost all Course in Miracles students way off the mark. 
then they will believe that they are choosing the Holy Spirit when they are not doing that at all, because they think that choosing the Holy Spirit is the goal of the course. The goal of the course is that you choose the miracle, which means that you finally understand that you are choosing. And then you learn to forgive yourself for continually choosing your specialness. If you do that, what you have done in effect is let Jesus look at your ego with you. So we're back to this whole thing that the course is about looking. And I want to add one course quote to that. Let me just dig it out here. Um, it's from chapter 14, uh, 6 6. Um, the Holy Spirit asks of you but this. Bring to him every secret you have locked away from him. Open every door to him and bid him enter the darkness and lighten it away. At your request, he enters gladly. He brings the light to darkness if you make the darkness open to him. But what you hide, he cannot look upon. He sees for you. And unless you look with him, he cannot see. Lots of people have this idea of, I'm just going to give that to you, Holy Spirit. You sort that out for me. I'll get back to you later, see if you fixed it. That's not. We have to look at the darkness without attacking ourselves for it, without calling it sinful or evil or guilty. We've got to notice our ego thoughts happening in our mind. Uh, without judging them. And as long as we're doing that, we're holding hands with Jesus. And this is what he's saying. Bring it to me. <laughs> Don't hide anything from me. Let me look at what you consider your darkness. Uh, but again, he can't look at it unless you join your perceptions with him, which means you can't judge. Um, you have to be the still alert presence, um, this witness to your ego thoughts happening. So you're awake in your mind with Jesus of the Holy Spirit. This is what you're doing. He cannot, sorry, uh, unless you look with him, he cannot see. Very important. The vision of Christ is not for him alone, but for him with you. Our job is to look. That's why Ken always spoke about the being in the cinema with Jesus. This is only a metaphor. There's no cinema. This is a visualization. This is a way of training ourselves. It's a training wheels ways of, of learning to stay awake in our mind, joined with that thought of perfect love in our mind as we witness our ego, as we bring our darkness to the light. Bring therefore all your dark and secret thoughts to him and look upon them with him. So again, all we do is we, we bring it to the Holy Spirit. It's his job. He holds the light and you the darkness. So it's not your job to let the darkness go. It's not your job to fight the darkness, change the darkness, choose against the darkness. No, you bring the darkness. He brings the light. And they cannot coexist when both of you together look on them. So you join with Jesus of the Holy Spirit as a non-judgmental observer, and you look upon your ego thoughts happening. Now, Jesus is saying, the ego thoughts, uh, they're not going to be able to survive, but that's Jesus's job. That's my job. You just keep looking at them without judging them, identified with me as the thought of perfect love in your mind. So his judgment must prevail, and he will give it to you as you join your perception to his. Um, so really, last week and this week, we're talking about the fact that forgiveness is the Holy Spirit's job. All we do is join with the Holy Spirit and we look at our guilt. Okay, now, so so looking, this is the name of the game, <laughs> okay, looking. Uh, most times we're unconscious in our thought stream. Thoughts are just happening on autopilot and we're not aware of thought is happening. There's nobody witnessing them. There's nobody apparently above the battleground with Jesus. Um, at the end of the day, uh, your body isn't real. 
it's a puppet. Uh, the thoughts in your mind are not your own thoughts. Um, you're not an individual personal self. There are no individual personal selves. <laughs> what you are is a mind outside of time and space, a decision maker mind, uh, which is choosing to identify with the ego thought system and therefore thinks it's a body and thinks it's the insane voice talking to itself in his mind and doesn't know it's made choice. It thinks, well, that's who I am. I'm a body. I'm the insane voice talking to itself. But but we have forgotten that we just chose to be that because we don't know we're the decision maker and we return ourselves to our identity as the decision maker when we look at our ego thoughts and feelings and body without judgment now we join with the holy spirit and the decision maker joined with the holy spirit is a non-judgmental observer So, um, so this is the, 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 the only, the only way to return to my identity as the decision maker is to, the only way to be what I am, at least my right mind itself, the only way to be that is to look at what I'm not without judging it. That returns me to my identity as the decision maker. So looking is the entirety of it. And then we let the looking do the work of undoing guilt okay um now we do have a forgiveness process which is that um we if i am joined with the holy spirit that thought of perfect love in my mind all is well i don't have any guilt um i know i'm not the body i know i'm not the insane voice talking to itself i am what is with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Um, however, what I will do is I will get afraid of the light. My guilt will make me afraid of the light. My fear of not being an individual little me, um, personal self, uh, will come to the fore. And I will push the Holy Spirit out of my mind. We all know how, how, how quickly that happens. So we get up in the morning and go, I'm going to join with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be with the Holy Spirit all day. And like literally three minutes later, you've been like off on some unconscious rant in your head. And so we got afraid of love and we pushed the Holy Spirit away. And now we're back in the personal mind, the ego mind, in the ego thought system. And all the guilt is there and that guilt needs, you know, it, it, it's denied and therefore it gets um, projected out and seen in the world. Now it's like, you did this to me. The weather did this to me. The cold did this to me. <laughs> um, and so all the blaming starts. Um, but but all, all the guilt is from having pushed the Holy Spirit out of my mind because I got afraid of it. Now, I guess it's quite important to say Keith didn't push the Holy Spirit out of, the, out, out of his mind. Uh, the mind that I am the decision maker mind chose against identification with that thought of perfect love in my mind and went back to identifying with being Keith. And then all we can do is notice, oh, been unconscious again, and you go back to the cinema with Jesus. Um, okay, so, so when we find ourselves that we have pushed the Holy Spirit away, <clears throat> we have... Um, identified once again with the ego thought system and bodies and the world and lack and need and guilt and blame. And then suddenly someone's going to do something and we're going to feel awful and murderous and hurt, and devastated. And um, and what we want to do is we want the, we want to, we've only one problem, which is that we have um, chosen against the Holy Spirit for the ego. And there's only one solution to anything, which is that we undo our, faulty decision for the ego and go back to the Holy Spirit. So whatever is going on, we, we go back to the Holy Spirit in our mind. And, you know, our formula is that we go, well, the guilt isn't in you. You know, I've made a decision to see guilt in you. I'm making a decision to see the, my guilt in you. Um, and I can take it back and I can look at that guilt in me because you're just a reflection of what I don't want to look at in myself. Um, and then I, I I join with the Holy Spirit and I look at all these awful feelings that are going on inside of me and I let the Holy Spirit undo them. So really, you know, I've made a decision to see guilt in, my guilt in you. 
And I can take that back and I can realize I made a decision um, to put that guilt in me to protect me from the Holy Spirit. I got afraid of love. So this is our forgiveness process. So instead of looking at the guilt, my guilt in you, I now look at my guilt in me. And then so I'm taking responsibility. Whatever feelings are going on is my guilt. Um, I join with the Holy Spirit and let his light shine them away. You bring the darkness, he brings the light. They can't coexist. So that that's our formula. But okay, so we, what we want to do is we want, we want to get back to this idea of not being just like an ego going around simply identified with the insane voice talking to itself in your mind and believing you're a body. And so we go back to the Holy Spirit and wherever we're st like, you can only go as far as you can go with this. So if you've done something on me and I am absolutely murderous <laughs> and plotting your awful death, that's what I bring to the Holy Spirit. You know, and if I can, and when I can, I can choose to see that, that that my guilt in you is a decision and I can change that decision and look at the guilt in myself. And then if that's as far as I go, that's where I bring what I bring to the Holy Spirit, the guilt in myself, the awful feelings. Um, it's just wh wherever you're at, you just bring it to the Holy Spirit and he'll bring you through the phases. Um, and the third thing I want to say is, um, obviously Jesus speaks very, um, mythologically about the Holy Spirit. He anthropomorphizes the Holy Spirit, um, like he's a person in the course. And the Holy Spirit is just the memory of our identity as Christ in God. So, the Holy Spirit is just this place of light and love in our mind, the memory of light and love in our mind. That's what it is. Okay, it's not a person. It doesn't do anything, despite the mythology. Um, it is a place of light to which we bring our illusions and our guilt and where they are undone. It's so Ken always said it was like a lighthouse in your mind, and it just shone the light on the darkness, and the darkness dissipated. So if Jesus is saying to us, and I'm saying to you, forgiveness isn't your job, it's the Holy Spirit's job, then, um, then what we really need to understand is that all you do is you join with and, and identify with that place of stillness and peace and love in your mind um, and look. And the looking will dispel the darkness. It's not like... There's a person who's the Holy Spirit that rides in on his horse and starts fighting the shadows and like undoing things and running through formulas and mixing his medicines. So it's not that. That's, you know, a mythology. It is the looking. Non-judgmental looking. That's what the one thing that the ego self can't do is look at something without judgment. And the minute non-judgmental looking, looking at illusions without judging them happens. Um, that's the herald of salvation. That's what will undo the ego. Because what we did at the very start was there was a tiny mad idea of being separate from God, having an identity other than God. Um, and what we did was we judged it. We took it very seriously. We called it sin. And we said it was guilty and that we were going to get destroyed for it. And so what we're really doing is we're undoing all of that. Um, you know, and, and, and then, you know, the ego talked us into never looking at it in yourself. Don't look at the guilt in yourself. If you do, God will strike you dead. Go make a world and hide in the world. Splinter yourself, fragment yourself in the world and never look at the guilt in yourself. See it outside yourself in the world. And so the, all we have to do is look at the guilt inside of ourselves instead of in the world and realize it, it's not real because the separation never happened. So this non-judgmental looking is the magic. And, and what we do is we don't, as the ego self, try and tweak it. I'm the forgiver. 
I've forgiven this, I've forgiven that, I've forgiven the other in my life. No, you haven't. You're you're a movie character. <laughs> you're just running through a script. Your thoughts are not even your own. That place of silence and stillness in your mind is the memory of what you are. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to let the silence and the stillness and the, and the memory of love in your mind do its work uh, on doing your false self and establishing a self that you are, or at least the right-minded self within the dream, which makes way for um, consciousness to be undone at the very top of the ladder and the restoration of God is. Okay, so I've spoke loads, and I think I should throw that open to questions. So Sally, if you wanted to take yourself off mute, and um, do we have any questions going on in the chat box? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, Janine, Elizabeth, or I'm sorry, I think Anne was the first person. Okay. Anne, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, Anne. Hi, Keith. <laughs> um, I, I, I just have a, a, some clarification I need on guilt. And sure. um, so it, am I right in, in that guilt is, there's only this, the guilt that, we think we separated or we made a decision to separate. That's the only guilt. And then it manifests in all these other guilt trips throughout the day. Yes, there's only one guilt. So there's just the one. And then, so mm -hmm. if I feel guilty because like my dog got hurt the other day and I felt guilty. So that it's really not guilt because there's no dog, even though, you know, I took care of him. But <laughs> there's, so the guilt is really just, the separation that I'm choosing. Yes, we didn't want to look at that on ourselves. The ego says you cannot look at that guilt. I mean, the ego told us. Now, again, we say the ego told us, right? I mean, the ego is the decision maker identified with the ego thought system, which says we've separated from God, right? But once we'd accepted that lie, then then our thoughts told us um, we can't like, okay, we've done it. We've separated from God, but you, this guilt is enormous. Uh, we've destroyed heaven. We've murdered God. Uh, we've brought down heaven so I can be a separate me. Because there was no me in heaven. There's yes. just God. So it's like, I've, I, I've killed God to be this me. And, and, and the guilt is enormous. And, you know, this is a sin. This is a terrible sin against God. And I have all this enormous guilt about it. And I have this absolute terror about the punishment that's coming to me because God's going to take this. God's not going to tolerate me in his creation. He's going to want to go back to God is. And so I'm going to get destroyed. And then it's like, well, this is absolutely intolerable in my mind. And, you know, God's in my mind. There's the memory of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And I need to get away from it. And I, I need to never look at this guilt again. And so that's why we went and we like made a world and fragmented ourselves and hid in it. And then we had all these opportunities to go, ah, no, the, the guilt's not because, because of what I did to God. The, the guilt is over what happened to the dog. Okay, that makes it more clear. And then, yeah, and then and I... you see, and that keeps the guilt in, in my mind because here's the thing we yeah. want the guilt. Yeah, Thank you. because if I look inside and realize there's no guilt, that means the separation never happened, there never was a me. Yeah. So, we the thing is, we want guilt to be real. At least the decision maker identified with the ego thought system wants guilt to be real, it's just it can't be mine. <laughs> I need it to be yours. Yeah. Um, yes. And that's that's what the world is. But but, yeah, but make yeah. no mistake, we want guilt to be real. That's why, you know, we 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 can't let our brothers off the hook for anything they do to us. Guilt has to be real because if there's no guilt, there's no me. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I found myself in. And and so then that that voice that's you should have been watching more carefully. You should, you know, should, 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 you should, he wouldn't have gotten hurt if you hadn't done that. And then when I told my husband, he thought it was my fault too. So then I was <laughs> <mad at him. laughs> so then I said, Oh no, I'm putting my guilt on him now, you know? And <laughs> yeah. So, so that was when I, um, I tried to do, you know, what you've been talking about and I try, you know, just to sit with it and not judge it with the Holy spirit. And um, that was really hard. It was like a ping pong match. It's always I mean, like a ping pong. 
It's always oh like God. a ping pong. Yes. <laughs> it was like, um, oh, and I was trying not to judge myself for being in the ping pong match. And absolutely. And so, yes. Yeah. So, okay. So that's kind of what it looks like. And, and then um, I did get to a place, you know, I just kept working with it and, and trying to be there with it. And, um, and then I started to cry. And so then I felt, okay, I might've made a little contact there and, nice. uh, and, and just, and just went with that. But I just wanted to check and, and, uh, and seeing, cause I think like, you know, I'm in 12 step recovery. And so resentment's okay. a really big word, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a resentment's a number one offender, but isn't resentment and guilt the same thing? Cause it feels like I'm putting the blame yeah, I, was, I think definitely. Yeah. Resentment and judgment, which is just, yeah, projected guilt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah for sure. And, and, and I guess, you know, all that's actually happening is the, um, the moment where the tiny mad idea happens and there is the ego thought system that says this is real and the Holy Spirit thought system says, hang on a minute, you remember heaven. This is actually impossible. There's just God. Um, yeah. And that's all that's actually happening. Right. But we've yeah. created this smokescreen of a world where everything's getting played out symbolically. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so, um, like there's nothing actually happening here. <laughs> All the yeah. action is at that moment um, after the separation, which is like, is it real or is it not? That's actually all that's happening. We've just smoke screened it with the world. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use like, you know, I see like, I want to just go, you know, it's all a movie, you know, I always see mm -hmm. here, I can hear your voice. It's just a movie. And, and yes. but I, but I still need to, I can't just do that. It's kind of like, it feels like denial or something that, you know, I mean, I yeah. still need yes. to, I want that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, it, it's not enough to say this is a movie, we have to experience the fact that there's a part of me that's not in the movie. Got it. Okay. 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 So, um, so, you know, if I'm not in the movie, where am I? And so what we got to do is we've got to watch the movie without judgment. And that establishes that I'm a mind. Yeah. Um, that I'm not the body. Um, or even in the world. I go back to Jesus above the battleground. There's a part of me, part of my mind that can be with Jesus and can feel that all is wellness yeah. and stillness and peace and memory of love I, I i can be there in my mind um even as the movie plays the movie of my body and the movie of my insane thoughts and the movie of what's going on in the, in the, in the world um and that's why um just to return to ken's quote from earlier on um it's not about Actually, I didn't use that quote from earlier on. I won't, I won't waste time seeking it out now. But, but the practice of the course is we want to have a dual awareness whereby we are carrying on with our life and we're getting angry and we're getting hurt. We're getting um, in pain and things are happening and we're responding to them. And that there is another part of our mind that's with Jesus or the Holy Spirit, knowing it's all made up. And that's how we practice the course is that we have that dual awareness going on in our mind. Um, and that's why Ken says, um, it's not about, um, the course isn't about choosing against the ego and choosing the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's about looking at the fact that you are choosing the ego. And that's what this dual awareness is about. And this is where our whole metaphor of being with, in, in the cinema with Jesus, this is what it's, what it's all about, is that the fact is, I am choosing the ego. I am choosing to be the body. I am choosing to see guilt on, in the movie. I am, um, you know, because, you know, nobody's a body. But when someone dies, I'm going to make a very big deal out of that and be very sad and like bereft about the whole thing. Um, and And so... You know, the course is not about me um, choosing against the ego and choosing the Holy Spirit and everything's fabulous. It's about me joining with the Holy Spirit in order to look at the fact that I'm choosing my ego. Um, but but like I said, but the part of me that's looking isn't in the movie. 
the part of me that's looking isn't buying the bullshit. Um, so, so it's not like my whole mind has stopped believing in the movie. It's just that part of my mind, you know, despite the fact that one part of my mind, I've, I have a split mind. We all have a split mind. And the problem is up until this point, we've all lived our life as the ego self in the ego thought system. And Jesus isn't saying to us, get out of the ego thought system and go completely 100% with the Holy Spirit. He's saying, bring in the Holy Spirit to look at the ego thought system that you're choosing with you. So that's a really crucial point. Because if you think that the goal of the course is to choose against the ego and choose the Holy Spirit, you're going to do a massive guilt trip on yourself. You're going to think that you're crap and you're going to think the course is too hard and it's impossible and nobody could possibly ever do it. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, there's absolutely no doubt about that because in, in a given moment, you're going, to, you're going to be like really angry with someone and it'll cross your mind. <laughs> I'm never upset for the reason I think I am and I could choose pieces out of this. And you're going to go, I don't care. <laughs> I want to be angry. I'm entitled to be angry. Um, and and again, that's where you'll go, well, to hell with the course. I, I can't be dealing with the course. But but that's not what the course is about. Um, all you want to do is you want to just have one part of your mind present that knows this is all made up and you're getting upset about nothing, even as you continue to get upset. Mm -hmm. And that's enough. You're bringing your two minds together. And that's that's, that's going to spell the beginning of the end for the ego, because if there's a part of you genuinely stepping back and objectively looking at what a crap show the ego is, and actually the fact that you're miserable all the time by choosing it, that's what will guarantee you will choose again. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. And that's not what Jesus is asking us to do. His whole course is about us realizing we're choosing. You're not a body. <laughs> You're not the insane voice talking to itself. You've chosen that and you've forgotten its choice. And he wants to bring us back to realizing it's a choice. And if we have this split awareness going on in our mind, we know part of me is peaceful no matter what. But there's another insane part of me that's not. <laughs> and we bring the two together. And, um, and, and from the sane part, we look at the insane part without judging ourselves. Um, and now we know it's a choice. Yeah. And that's that's what sets up the beginning of the ego's end. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. That, that makes, makes sense. sense. Thank Good. you so much. Thank Where you. should we go next, Sally? Okay, Janine Elizabeth. You can unmute yourself and ask Hi, your Janine. questions. Hi. Um okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna um word this right, but so I had a thought coming the other day and like I know it was an ego thought because it caused it caused me fear. Um I don't know if if I'm gonna word it right, but I was thinking so like if there's this mind, a whole mind in eternity and it has this time and idea, right? Um and then once the mind's healed again, I guess my thought was what's to stop us from having like another tiny idea and then another one. And then I got exhausted thinking about it. And basically yes. my, fear was, my fear was like, well, our mind can heal, but I just, I'm scared to have another tiny mad idea. And it's this <laughs> scared, being scared in itself, I realize it's an yes. ego thought, but like, I just, I feel like I've been here for, I just feel like I'm ancient and I, I'm 35 and I feel like a million and I'm just, you know what I mean? Just, I'm, I feel tired. Like when I started the course a couple of years ago, again, I was like, okay, I'm tired. I'm ready. But I, then that thought came in the other day and I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to have another idea. So that's my question. Okay. Uh, you're not the first. That is a regular, <laughs> regular, regular cost. Uh, that's the second most common question after how does the mat tiny mat idea happen? Uh, the next question is, well, how does it not keep happening? And what you're saying is, I believe the tiny mad idea happened and the separation was God from was real, that, uh, that I murdered God, that I create that I made a world and that um, the separation is real. And I want you to tell me how it happened. And I want you to um, tell me how to not let it happen again. Now, what's wrong with that picture? It never happened. But I'm, saying, here, I'm here thinking it happened. I don't want to be in the same situation talking again and thinking it happened, even though it didn't. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but what you really are is Christ in heaven, one with God and completely unaware of the tiny mad idea. <laughs> um, and so it it has never happened. And you're saying that because you have identified with uh, the faulty thought system of the ego, and therefore you believe in illusions. Um. But like the idea never happened and the separation never happened. Um, and so your only job is to learn to stop listening to the ego and um, start listening to the Holy Spirit until you can have an experience for yourself that the separation never actually happened. It never did happen. Like when we return um, where we've never left to heaven, there will be no memory of the tiny mad idea because it never happened. So there's no question that it could happen again because it never happened in the first place. Um, and I know that's a little bit of a, and, and I know that's not going to, Jesus says in the course, that's not going to satisfy the ego. Yeah. Uh, and what he means by that is he's not going to satisfy the decision maker identified with the ego, believing in the reality of all this nonsense and going, but I want to know how it happens. And I want to know how to prevent it happening again. I, but it, But it has never happened. <laughs> Okay, so so Jesus says um, that's not going to completely intellectually satisfy the ego, mm -hmm. but so and, but he's saying don't let theology delay you because he knows that's going to be an ego, and it has been for many many people a big ego delay tactic, which is like, well, I can't do the course unless I know how the tiny man idea could have happened, or you know, I I, I really can't apply myself to the course unless I know it'll never happen again. <laughs> so Jesus knows that's a delaying tactic of the ego. And so what he says actually is don't let theology delay you. Seek an experience. Seek an experience that that separation never happened. Good. Thank you. So where shall we go next, Sally? Okay, we have uh, Francisco, and I'm sorry if I don't say your last name correctly, but Logger. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Francisco. Hi, yeah, no, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, hello, uh, glad I was finally able to join for one of these sessions. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I had a question regarding what you were speaking about with uh, Anne's question uh, with regards to having that dual awareness of where yes. you know it's enough to have that, you know, even if the body or whatever is still having that experience and is still, you know, up in anger or sadness or whatever, mm -hmm. Um, it's enough to have that, that, you know, just a tiny part of your mind that's um, aware that, you know, it's not happening or that yeah. it's really the guilt. Um, I guess whenever I try to do that, it almost feels like as soon as I have that, try to have that, that awareness, it's like there's a voice that says, oh, no, but that's not genuine. You're just saying the words. You're just going through the motions. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to that, if there's anything that can be done to sort of help those thoughts. Um, yeah. Or it's just something that I have to kind of wait for the willingness to arrive. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. Um, again, what we want to do is we want to have an experience. And, um, and like I say, it doesn't matter whether you want to visualize being above the battleground with Jesus or you want to visualize being in the cinema with Jesus. These are just visualizations. This is not a magic formula. Uh, this is a training wheels way of learning to experience yourself as awareness, as the decision maker, as a non-judgmental uh, observer, rather than as the insane voice talking to itself. And so what you want to do is you want to step back um, from your thoughts and feelings and be a witness to them happening rather than be unconscious in them. And, and practice saying to yourself, um, well, you know, so yes, I'm all up in arms and I'm feeling awful and murderous and angry. And then in your mind, just like sort of, you know, be awake with Jesus saying, but what does that have to do with the love and peace of the Holy Spirit in my mind? Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean you have to let all the anger go. <laughs> you have to uh, choose against the ego and you've got to choose to be above the battlegrounds. Uh, it doesn't mean that. Um, again, what it means is that, you know, that, that's a that's a very powerful way. And, you know, so many people in the group have said how powerful, what does it have to do with the love and peace of the Holy Spirit in my mind is. And it doesn't mean you're going to instantly do forgiveness and everything is forgiven and it's all fabulous. What it means, it it it, it awakens the part of your mind or awakens you to the part of your mind that's already awake with Jesus. 
uh, outside of time and space. It, it, that that presence rises in your mind and now it's present rather than you being unconscious in your thought stream. And um, and so and then what you want to do is you want to notice yourself choosing to be special, choosing to be this special body that needs to be respected and is angry because it's not getting respected and because it has lack and need and because someone wasn't. To, it's it's to watch the fact that you you're choosing your specialness. You could choose to identify with this peaceful part of you that's with Jesus, but you don't want to. And that's why, again, in Ken's quote, which is just, I think, so important where he says, um, function of the miracle is not to have us stop choosing our ego. So in that moment, you've stepped back from your thoughts and your feelings, and you are a witness to them happening with Jesus in your mind. You just identified with that thought of love, and you're noticing all this happening. Um, and, and, and noticing the fact that you're choosing to be the, the, the separate self, you're, you're choosing to be the body, you're choosing to be the insane voice talking to itself, thinking it's lacking and thinking it needs to protect itself and the world from the bad people. And you're doing it, but, um, but at least you're aware of it. <laughs> and that's what most people don't have. Um, so again, the function of the miracle is not to have us stop choosing our egos. It is for us to be aware that we are choosing the ego. Again, I can't emphasize this enough is what Ken says. This is what gets almost all Course in Miracles students way off the mark. And then they'll believe that they are choosing the Holy Spirit when they're not doing that at all. Because they think that choosing the Holy Spirit is the goal of the Course. The goal of the Course is that you choose the miracle, which means you finally understand that you're choosing. <laughs> um. And so this is what ends the ego's reign of terror because it's unconscious. We don't know we've chosen to be this ego self and now forgotten that it was a decision. Um, and the way that we return that awareness is by looking at our choice for the ego without attacking ourselves for it or calling it sinful, evil or guilty. Um, and, and as soon as we step into that non-judgmental space, we experience the decision maker. And what I will say to you, just to get back to your question, is that um, as you practice dual awareness in your life, and don't decide to do dual awareness when the, the crap hits the fan, uh, have that dual awareness when you're like having a walk, when you're at work, when you're talking on the phone, when you practice having that dual awareness, which is like, you know, um, on the one hand, I'm engaging with the world. I'm not denying my experience of a world, but there's a part of me that's denying the reality of it. I'm not denying my experience of it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not denying the fact that I'm dreaming and that there is things happening in the dream and I'm engaging with the dream as I must, but there's another part of me knows it's a dream. And that's what the dual awareness is. Would that make sense? And, what, yeah, what, that's... and if you practice that, um, you will start I promise you will start to feel the difference between identifying as the decision maker of that identity and being the ego. You will start to feel the difference between the two. So for me, in any given situation, when I'm having an ego attack, um, I, I can feel the part of me that's completely unaffected by it. And then I can notice myself still wanting to get angry with my husband and blame him for my distress and the unfairness of it all. So, but I, but I, I can see I'm choosing to be a separate self. I say I want the love of God, um, but I don't. I, I'm in this instance. I'm, I actually want to be a separate self. I don't want the love of God enough. I don't want to give up my separate identity. I don't want to give up my specialness. And so, what you want to do is you want to let Jesus look at that with you. That's what forgiveness is. Yeah, that's that helpful. Makes sense. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. So, so it it's it's so on because on the one hand, if we make forgiveness, oh, now your anger is coming up. You need to stop all that nonsense, and you need to go with the Holy Spirit, and you need to drop your anger. And if you can't, you're a crap course student, and you're not doing it properly, and you're just going to think that the course in miracles is impossible, and nobody's going to do that. Um, so that's that that's one extreme. Now I, I realize in terms of how Ken teaches forgiveness and what I am extolling here in terms of you look and you let the looking do the undoing. I, I realize that can sound a little bit like a cop out, you know. So you're like slapping someone around the room and going, Well, I'm looking at it with Jesus. <laughs> um, and so we do need to find a balance here where we understand that. Um Right now, I'm to, I, I, I say I want love, but I'm actually afraid of it. 
uh, right now. And 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 I'm choosing to be the ego, even though it costs me the love of God. So I understand what I'm choosing and I understand the cost. But at the same time, I don't attack myself for it. Because again, the purpose of forgiveness is undoing guilt. It's not to create guilt because your forgiveness process isn't as perfect as you think it should be. And that's why it's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not ours. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Of course. Where shall we go next, Sally? Okay, we're going to go to the chats. Um, and this cool. is from Ginny. Um, how do I not judge the voice in my head? Um, because you you have to, you, you must practice being the witness that doesn't judge. See, if you're judging the voice in your head, you're still the voice in your head. So the, the only thing that's present is the voice in your head. Um, so you, the, the part of Jenny that can look at Jenny without judging her is not Jenny. It's the decision maker that a minute ago was unconscious thinking it was Jenny. Um, so again, we're back to this idea of a dual awareness. The decision maker joined with the Holy Spirit is non-judgmental observer. The decision maker identified with the ego um, is Jenny. It is um, unconsciousness and thoughts and feelings. Um, and so what we're saying is we want to have a dual awareness. You don't have to stop being Jenny. You don't have to deny Jenny. You don't have to, you know, but you have to deny what Jenny is. Um, or, or, or undo the denial of what Jenny is. So, so what we want to do is the only thing the movie character Jenny can't do is look at something without judging it. So the only way for you to be not Jenny, to go back into your role as the decision maker, um, is to do what Jenny can't do, which is to, to simply be, to allow what is, um, to look at the ego without judging it. So again, if you are looking at the, the voice and judging the voice, step back again and don't judge yourself for judging yourself. So again, it's always just about stepping back into the witnessing without judgment. <coughs> so the voice is happening and then you become aware of the voice and you start judging the voice. Step back and don't judge yourself for judging yourself. Just be a witness to yourself judging yourself. It's always just about stepping back one more step to the witness position. That's the holy instant. That's where you take Jesus's hand. That's where he can take over. That's where the Holy Spirit can take over. So again, we don't have to get rid of all the crazy in the head. We've just got to step back from identifying with it. And we've got to look at it without judging it. Good. Uh, what's next, Sally? Okay, I'm sorry if I said Jenny, because it was Ginny. I'm sorry, Ginny. Um, <laughs> but okay, so this is from uh, Christine uh, uh, Coban. And she asks, so we became attached to the identification with the personal self and choose to keep guilt, uh, keep guilt real? Yes, we, 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 we want guilt to be real um get because you know the body is the manifestation of guilt um you know the world was rose from the guilt to keep the guilt hidden is what how jesus puts it in the course um and so what we need to understand is that yes in our insane condition we want guilt to be real but we want it to be in someone else um so i need guilt to be real but I, it's intolerable to look at it in myself. So we made a world where we can look at it outside of ourselves and go, you're the murderer. I didn't murder God. You're the murderer. <laughs> you know, we, 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 you know, in our mind, that part we don't have access to right now because we split it off. You know, we deliberately left the mind or thought we did and split it off. And we don't know what's in the mind. Never mind the guilt that's there. We don't know anything about that because we, we we think we're the movie character. <laughs> I think I'm Keith. I think I'm a male in the, you know, 2020s in Ireland. Um, and I think that's my identity. And that stops me from knowing I'm a mind. And um, and that's the purpose of the world, to keep us mindless. 
Okay, so I've no idea that what what a mind is even, never mind that I have a mind and I don't, how the hell would I know about the guilt that's there? Well, now the only way I can know about the guilt that's there is that I read about murderers and child rapists and war criminals and I see guilt in them. And that's the only access I have to the guilt I have for being God's murderer, for being the war criminal that destroyed heaven. And so it's only in taking guilt back from the external movie characters and looking at it in myself that it can be undone. That's my journey home. That's the Holy Spirit's plan. That salvation script is that that guilt in my mind that I've no longer got access to and can't fix um, because I can't see it or know about it. It's blazing in the other movie characters. That's where I forgive it. So I hope that makes sense. But yes, we want guilt to be real. We just want it to be everyone else's. Because the minute the minute guilt is undone, the, the, it's the disappearance of the universe. Yeah. Um, anything else in the chat box then? One more in the chat. Um, and this is from uh, Valerie B. And so we don't practice choosing again. We practice only recognizing we choose the ego and we look without judgment. Yes. Um, you want to think for now that choosing again means choosing to look with the Holy Spirit. Because if you actually choose against the ego for the Holy Spirit, that's the disappearance of the universe. And you're not going to do that because your fear is too great. And if you think that's what it's about, you're going to do a massive guilt trip and yourself think you're a crap course student and that you can't do this and it's impossible and nobody's ever going to do it. And you shouldn't even think about it. Um, so for now, you want to think about choosing again as choosing to notice that you've pushed the Holy Spirit out of your mind and to, to go back and re-identify with the Holy Spirit in your mind and, and to let him look at your ego with you and to realize that, that you're choosing the ego in every moment. You're choosing to believe that your brothers are bodies. <laughs> you're choosing to interact with the dream like it's real. Um, you're choosing to like live in the movie and pretend the, me the movie's real life when it's not. Um, you're not going to just stop doing that. Ideally, we would. <laughs> But our guilt's not going to let us. Um, and our fear of the light is not going to let us. And so what you want to do is, um, again, this is wh wh why Ken makes that very important statement that I've read multiple times, is that um, you want to look at the fact that you are choosing the ego and forgive yourself for it. Because the part of you forgiving yourself for choosing the ego isn't the ego. And it's present in your mind. The light is present in your mind. You're no longer in the darkness. Your mind's not just darkness. The light is there in the darkness and it will begin dispelling the darkness. And as I said to one of our questioners earlier on, Francisco, um, if you practice this dual awareness, um, you're going to start feeling the identity as the decision maker, which is invulnerable. Even as you keep choosing your specialness and choosing to be the, the body and the, the insane voice talking to itself in the stories, um, you will start to feel the two different identities when you as a decision maker are choosing to be Keith or choosing to be a mind that's watching Keith and the body. And, and, and as you practice that, what you are will tell you of itself because you'll realize that you are not what you are looking at and forgiving. What you are is that which is looking with Jesus. And your decision for once and for all against the ego and for the Holy Spirit will be inevitable. The minute you start looking at the ego shenanigans, um, it spells the beginning of the end for the ego because the ego can only survive in unconsciousness where it's not being looked at. So the self that looks is not the self that's looked at. That's your dual awareness. So you're looking at yourself, choosing the ego, and you're forgiving yourself for it. But, you know, the capital S self is present in your mind. That's going to start on undoing your little S self, your investment in your little S, uh, S self. And one day you're going to go, I don't want this anymore. That's that's the choosing again. 
when once and for all we go, we've looked at the entirety of the ego thought system and being a, a personal self, being an insane voice talking to itself, believing on the body, we're going to look at all of that and go, I don't want that anymore. And I don't have to be that because I've never been the body. <laughs> there is no body. Um, and, and, I've, and I've never been the insane voice talking to itself. That's an ego script. Um, but what, what we want to do is we want to practice being with Jesus in our mind. And we want to look at the fact that we're choosing to be the ego. We don't want to be deluding ourselves going, I'm such a holy ego. I'm forgiven everyone in my life. It's all fabulous. The course is wonderful. Um, and I want to teach everyone else how to do it. That, that's just holy ego nonsense and crap. Um, what we want to do is we want to, that's why Jesus says, get in touch with your unkindness. You want to get in touch with your self-hatred. You want to get in touch with the party that wants to murder people. That's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want your platitudes and telling them he's fabulous and teaching his course to people and how great you are as a student. That's just deluded nonsense. Um, if that was true, you wouldn't be here. Uh, Jesus wants you to bring him your muck. He wants you to bring him your vile, your, your murderous intent. That's what he can work with. That's what he can help you with. Um, but not when we're trying to be the holy ego and the spiritualized ego. No, this is a course in looking at squarely at your darkness without attacking yourself for it. That's how we get to the light. So I hope that makes sense. So I think we have three hands up. Would that be your count as well? Or have we more? Three hands up, yes. So we're going to draw a line under that for today so we can sort of try and finish on time. Uh, so we have Marsha, Diana, and Lael. So if anyone else has a question, stick a pin in it for next week or ask it in the group, A Course in Miracles with Keith. And when I think of it, if anyone is watching us on YouTube, you're welcome to join us in the group. Just when you apply, do agree to the group's um, uh, rules. Um, at the time of application, because that's the only way that we're going to let you in if you agree to the rules in advance. So where shall we, any idea who was first, Sally? Uh, Marsha, Thomas, okay. Thompson. Hi, Thomas. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be quick. I just <laughs> wanted to say that Ken used to say, and I've always remembered this, when we're talking about the ego, he'd say, what else would a good ego do? Yes. <laughs> I mean, we've already established that we have this ego reaction to everything we see. What else would a good ego do but judge, attack, and do all that stuff? And, um, I, you know, sometimes when I say that, I can just shake my head and smile. Oh, there I go again. Well, you know, just let it go. I've looked at it and I've realized what it yep. is and I wouldn't keep it but just laughingly this whole weekend uh well maybe not today but yesterday was such a crap show and I won't go into the I was at a parade right and I hated everybody I felt <laughs> miserable they're all dressed up like Christmas trees and there's this one girl that I can't stand because she didn't invite me to her Halloween party <laughs> and she comes sashaying by with her white boots on and dressed up like a Christmas tree. And I just thought, I hate her. And so the only thing we do in those situations is we we understand that the only reason we were feeling that way was because we pushed the Holy Spirit out of our mind. Exactly. We got a, we got afraid of love. Mm -hmm. And we fell down. And what we want to do is we want to look at that and go, wasn't that silly? Not guilty, yeah, absolutely not sinful, silly. not failing the course. None of that. No. That's, the, that's the way the ego wants us to beat ourselves over the head. What we want right. to do is we want to look at that and go, look, at I got afraid of love again and I fell down and now I'm going to get up and I'm going to forgive myself and I'm going to go back. Remember, we've only one problem, which is being separate from the Holy Spirit in our mind, right. being unconscious to him, uh, just right. thinking we're the insane voice talking to itself. We're not identified with love in our mind. And all we do is we go back to the love. We don't go judging ourselves and beating ourselves right. over the head with the course. And it's so tempting to do that. And all you do is you go back to being with the Holy Spirit uh, right. and let him do the work. And um, yeah. there's a lot and, of work and, and again, to do. <laughs> yeah, but it's so important just to understand that we're going to get afraid of love. As you practice yeah. this course, you're constantly going to get afraid of love. Now, again, that's not Keith getting afraid of love. 
when when I as decision maker get afraid of love, I will become identified with the movie character mm-hmm. Keith. Okay. Um, that's the point, right? So it's not it's not that Marsha or Keith gets afraid of love. It's that the decision maker above the battleground with Jesus, the non-judgmental observer, the awareness gets afraid of love and chooses to be Marsha who hates right. the woman in the white boots. <laughs> <laughs> and the one in the white boots uh, is afraid of love too. And we all are. She's Everyone actually is. my savior because yes. she's showing me all that kind of, I'm just all that, you know, and truly a really good forgiveness lesson, but I, Always. it really made me feel like crap and I just hated everybody and everyone was in my way and all these damn vehicles with wreaths and everything on them. And I'm just sitting there like the Grinch. <laughs> and the important the thing curse. is that you you felt like crap because you had pushed the Holy Spirit out of your mind, exactly. and then you projected the blame for you feeling like crap onto the white boots and everyone else. Was dressed <laughs> right. dressed. I'm already <laughs> finding it funny. Thank you. I just wanted to add that though. The kids are, what else would a good ego do? Absolutely. Right? Like, yes. All right. But, thanks, but, Keith. And all we ever have to remember is we're not the ego. That's where we hide when we get afraid from afraid of love. But there is no ego. That's just a movie character. Right. Thank you. So where shall we go next then, Sally? Would we go to Diana uh, or Leo? Diana. Diana? Diana. Diana. I don't know. How, okay. I don't know how to say your name, but unmute yourself and ask your question. I'm not sure either. <laughs> I think it's Diana. <laughs> it's, Diana. It Diana? it's Diana. It's yeah. Diana. Very good. I wanted to say uh, last night, um, I uh, got on the Facebook page, um, your Facebook page, and the post you did of Ken Watnick, it just went through me like a lightning bolt because Mm -hmm. I could see where uh, I was trying to be a holy ego. Like once again, oh, I feel this way. I got to fix it. This isn't good. I'm not doing it right. And when I read this, it's, it's, I don't know, something, what I'm feeling like is happening, uh, Keith, is I'm watching these and I'm listening to a lot of Ken's videos Mm-hmm. Is it just feels like the ego's getting melted? There's like a melting happening mm-hmm. as I watch, like you said, the shenanigans of the ego, mm-hmm. uh, and there's just this melting happening. But um, this dual awareness, like, oh, wait a minute, no, uh, I don't have to fix it. Ah, the ego it can't fix the ego. Oh, that's right, that's key. Oh, yeah. shit, shit, all I gotta do. I just does not be the ego. All you have to do is not right. be the ego, which means look at the ego without judging it. And suddenly that presence yeah. is in your mind. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like right there. And, you know, every time I do that, I can take a deep breath. I swear to God, y'all. Like I can, yes. like I can literally take a deep breath every single time that I, I <clears throat> just say, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not Deanna, the character. I'm not the body. I'm not the insane thoughts in, in my head. I am what looks. And, and it sounds simple, but I, I swear, the more that I listen and the more that I did, that I, I see that this is truly my desire, it just melts it. It just, there's, it just, more clarity happens, more Good. and more. And here's a question for you, Diana. Are, are you beginning to feel the difference between being the decision maker and being Diana? Can, can you, are you starting to feel yes. the difference? Between the two yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Holy shit balls. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I am. It's yes. like. And, and then I find myself kind of walking around like, I, 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 it's a weird, yeah. it's weird. It's like, what's, this is weird. What's, yeah, yeah. There's this sense of, of this separate, separating out. I'm not having the light like I was before, like I shared mm-hmm. the, in on the Zoom, but there's more, like I was driving home last night and there was a thunderstorm and, and the water and the rain's coming down. But and it was like the rain was coming down so slowly, like I, like there was a real clear sense of of watch of observing the rain. I can't I can't explain it. No, no, no. But it, it's but hard it, to it's explain. Just, um, yeah, I, I want everyone to understand out. that when you begin this process, um, uh, you're always awareness. But awareness is has become lost in the objects of its awareness, which is the body and the insane voice talking to itself and the feelings and the external world and the perceptions and the and all the rest of it. And and as you begin this process of looking with the Holy Spirit, um, again, the self that looks is not the self that's looked at. Awareness is not the insane voice talking to itself, but it's going to take time. Uh, for awareness to separate itself out from the objects of its awareness. That's going to take time. And again, your practice is just 
this dual awareness, being with Jesus in your mind. And as you do that, it, it will start to separate out from the insane voice talking to itself until you, you can definitely feel in your mind the two different identities you can be. Um, you know, you can, you can, you can sort of feel your ability to step into that identity that goes, but I'm a mind, I'm still, and, and there's no problems here if I'm a mind and, but, but, but you'll still ping pong out of that and go, but hang on a minute. Um, he did that on me. That wasn't fair because <laughs> you've gone back to being the body and, and, and the personal self. And again, we're not asked to give up the personal self. We're asked to realize that the personal self is a choice we're making and forgive ourselves for it until our fear subsides through the looking enough that we're ready to make a once and for all decision against being a personal self. Um, and, and be completely identified with the, the, the memory of love in our mind. Super, thanks a million, Diana. So shall we go to Lael then? Yes. Hi, Lael. Hi, Keith. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for everybody who's participated uh, or who's just here. I, um, I feel like I can kind of answer my own questions, but they came up for me and I just, I guess I just, whatever. I'm going to ask the second one first, which is Go for it. kind of, thank you, kind of um, the role of feelings and emotion in all of this um, for two reasons. One is, you know, I was triggered by a, um, you know, apparently separate person or I felt, you know, blah, blah, blah last night. And then I felt the intensity, even as I sat at a Christmas concert, like join, well, I guess that's kind of appropriate, joining with um, the Holy Spirit to the best of my ability and seeing it neutrally, blah, blah, blah. The feelings were, the intensity of the feelings didn't dissipate um, for, is that basically a sign that I should keep, just stay as much as the logistics of my life allows, just stay there with the Holy Spirit, with this non-judgmental awareness of the fact that I've chosen the wrong teacher, just, just kind of chill out there until the feelings go away, the emotions. Yes. Uh, the, the one thing we don't do in the course, and it's a very easy trap to fall into, is that we don't deny the feelings. We don't like have these awful feelings come up and go, oh, I'm going to choose the Holy Spirit and those feelings are gone, kaput, and I'm just not going to think about them. I'm just going to push them away and I'm going to keep myself busy and I'm going to distract myself. Well, that's useless. Um, what we want to do always is, because people often say to me in the course, but this is dissociation, Keith, like you're, you're, you're looking at your thoughts and feelings. This is dissociate. No, it's not. It's the opposite. Um, normally what happens is that our feelings and our thoughts are happening unobserved. They're just like happening on autopilot. It's just like a movie playing. And, the, and there's, there's no witnessing presence. Nobody, there's no, the lights are on, but there's nobody home. You know, the movie's playing, but there's nobody in the cinema. Um, and that's the problem, right? And that's how the ego survives. And what we want to do is we want to step back and be the witness to the movie. So, so what happened was you got afraid of love and you push the Holy Spirit out of your mind and you were just completely lail. And then all that guilt of separateness from the Holy Spirit is bubbling there in your mind. And you projected that out and you had someone then that you could blame and go, you did this to me. So that's what we all do. That's what we all do all the time. And, and once that's happened, now that guilt is there and it's. And so ideally, what you so the first thing you want to do is look at the fact that you want to kill the other person um the murderous rage that's there and the guilt that you're seeing in them and then you want to you know look at the fact that that's your guilt um and that you're making a decision to see that guilt in that person instead of looking at it in yourself and if that's as far as you can go that's what you do you join with the thought of perfect love in your mind that is jesus and the holy spirit and you look at your murderousness and you look at your investment in making your brothers guilty so you can stay a separate person and, um, and when you're ready, mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. You, you might be, you, you know, that there will come a point if you stay conscious in your mind, if, if you don't go unconscious again and just be 100% identified in the ego, if you stay looking, then there'll come a point where you're ready to actually go, do you know something that is my guilt and I can, but this is why I do the course. And I'm actually going to look at that myself now and understand that's a decision I made to put this guilt here so I can be, I can be leal instead of and keep yeah, the Holy I Spirit's love away from me. 
Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I tend, I've been listening to you so much just uh, that I tend to kind of get there, whatever, nobody cares how long this process takes me. But um, I, I, another question. Before we go on to the other question, that, just one thing I didn't quite address in your first question is um, what we want to do is we, we, we do want to allow the feelings to be there. So the guilt has come up. We want to allow it to be there. We don't want to fight it. We don't want to pretend it's not there. We don't want to try and bury it or shout it down. Uh, what we want to do is we want to bring it to Jesus. We want to bring it to the Holy Spirit. We want to join with the love in our mind and we want to be present with the feeling instead of the feeling just happening unconsciously on autopilot. So all right. you're doing is you're, you're bringing the darkness to the light and then it's up to the light to dissipate the darkness. But all you do, remember, he, the Holy Spirit, brings the light. You bring the darkness and they can't coexist, right? But that's none of your business. Your business is you you bring your darkness. So you let your feelings be there. You don't fight them. You don't attack yourself for them. You don't make a big deal out of them. Uh, and what you do is you're with the Holy Spirit and you're allowing them to be there. And you, you are allowing Jesus and the Holy Spirit to look at it with you. And that looking will undo it. But that's their job. Your job is to stay conscious in your mind. Now, you won't stay conscious in your mind. You'll go unconscious. And then you just have to notice that and go back to the light. So it's all about you holding your light click. So it, it'll really come down to how, for how long can you hold the light in your mind without getting afraid of it and pushing it away? Because the light will dispel the darkness. It's for you to stay identified with the light and at least go back to it when you've noticed that you've went away from it. Does that make sense? That does. And I feel like your use of allow just generally in your talks has been very powerful for me. Um, it's just very helpful. And, and so what I'm hearing is that, uh, or what I'm extrapolating is that part of the neutrality is not feeling like this needs to be rushed or needs to like, let's wrap, let, you know, I feel like, okay, now I'm aware with, you know, the Holy Spirit in my mind, let's wrap this thing up now. I don't yeah, want to know it's not that anymore. Yeah. The, 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 new, no. the neutrality is just like, this is not necessarily in my time, just allow, allow, allow. So the yeah. other cool, this actually wasn't, I actually had three, but I think my third question, I can figure it out. My second question is related to the first one, which is mm -hmm. along with basically what I'm noticing sometimes and including this morning is just the way we talk about non-specific love in our minds. I notice mm -hmm. non-specific guilt in my body. For instance, for whatever reason, I know it's all in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. There is no body, but I just it will experience like a physical sensation of guilt and unease. But this guilt, it happens to be in the left side of my throat. So I guess the th what I'm thinking is the thing to do with that is to say, that's a sign that I'm invested in the ego's thought system. So even though it doesn't seem related to a situation or even to thoughts, just bring the Holy Spirit and witness it in a non-judgmental way. So just treat it the same way. It's it's interesting encountering the non-specific guilt. I don't know if mm -hmm. everybody else that's common or what. Um <laughs> I guess I mean, guilt is guilt is what's in our mind and then it gets projected onto our bodies and it gets projected onto other people's bodies. So I guess it's to understand it's not really in my body. It's it's in my mind. So we're always really joining with the Holy Spirit and looking at that guilt. So so it really the course is about coming out of the body and back to being a mind, which is what it means to be above the battleground with Jesus, um, not a body. So so really what you want to do is understand that, um, yeah, yeah. allow guilt to be there, allow feelings to be there, allow um, uncomfortable bodily sensations to be there. Um, and But, but it's to understand that we, we put the guilt in our mind there, first of all, and we did that to protect us from the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? I, I don't want your focus to stay on the body is, is the point I want to make to you. I want you to bring it back to your mind. So whatever Can you repeat? You're I'm sorry, somebody said something in the chat and I got distracted. So um, can you just repeat the, 
what you do want me to not the whole so thing, a, a miracle should be saying. a shift into invisibility as jesus says in the miracle principles so he wants to bring bring us out of the body um to the experience of our of the part of our mind that's not the body and um, it's to understand that right. the guilt is there so, so the guilt is in our mind and it gets projected onto the body but the origin of the guilt is in our mind guilt doesn't originate mm -hmm. in the body so we want to look at it where it's where it's starting which is in the mind and it gets projected from there so our idea is that we pull right. back the projections and then we look at guilt in our mind yeah like this this what i'm thinking is this is just a sign that i it's a symbol um, for you you know it's an a symbol of your gift that, for you that it, it's a symbol and it's it's demonstrating that i've invested in the ego's thought system you know now at some point whatever doesn't matter but yeah it's in my mind it's not it's not mm. actually in anybody that isn't actually here or whatever yes um yes. thank you so much um no problem. i appreciate your help Okay, so we have finished at a not too late um, time today, thankfully. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your attention. Uh, it's great that we've got finished with the forgiveness section as well as the prayer section now. And um, what we might do is just have a much more kind of relaxed meeting next week and maybe make it a Christmas themed Course in Miracles Zoom meeting. Maybe we might do that next week. And then, um, sorry, yeah, next week. And then we'll take a week off for Christmas. And then the following week, we'll be heading into the healing section of the Song of Prayer. God help us all. Um, <laughs> that's going to be really, really challenging, but also really, really interesting. So guys, once again, thanks a million for your attention. And I hope you got something out of today's meeting. And um, we will do it all again next week. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. That was wonderful. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome.